The new 2.7 liter bi-turbo engine is being installed in the S4 and A6 models. These are the first production cars in the world equipped with six cylinders, 30 valves, and twin turbos. With 250 horsepower at 5,800 RPM and 258 pounds-feet of torque beginning at 1,850 RPM, it's a key component in Audi's performance initiative. And it's an engine you are going to be seeing in your service department because it will be a popular package. There is a lot of concern about the serviceability of this engine and what is involved in its removal. This video is designed to give you the key points of engine removal and reinstallation. We are not going to show you the removal of every nut and bolt, but we will cover the key points of both removal and installation. Helpful hints will be illustrated along the way. We use some time-lapse photography to speed up some of the routine steps that you are already familiar with and for locations where it would be impossible to see what the technician's hand is doing. Be sure to use your service manual for the proper detailed step-by-step -step procedures. We have chosen the S4 because it will be a popular model and has the smallest engine compartment in which the 2.7T will be installed. Let's begin with the vehicle properly positioned to be lifted on the hoist. Throughout this program, the service manual procedures will be followed, along with some tips we picked up at the Audi Ingolstadt Germany service garage and in Auburn Hills, Michigan. Take the time to look over the engine and its related systems in detail. It is a good idea to take notes, mark items, and even take Polaroid pictures the first time you R&R this engine. There are lots of connectors and brackets to remove, and it may be a while before you put the vehicle back together again. You will be grateful for the time you spent documenting the disassembly. Remove the battery cover. Disconnect the battery negative cable. The positive cable. And the power supply cable. It supplies power to everything except the starter and alternator. You will have to pull it through the bulkhead later. Pull off the hood rear seal, then slide out the plenum cover. Carefully remove the decorative engine covers. The engine cover fasteners require only a quarter turn in either direction. The air cleaner cover just pulls off. The three engine covers each have a plastic clip that breaks easily if you don't pull it straight up. Pull out the air intake hose. Pop out the grills and remove the bumper retaining bolts. After you pull the bumper loose from its retaining clips, clamp off the headlight washer feed hose Remove the hose from the headlight washer unit and disconnect both fog light wiring connectors. Remove the bumper and store it in a safe place. Take out the retainer screw on the side of the intercooler and push the bottom of the rubber duct up and off the two positioning pins. Do the same for the right side intercooler. Unscrew the fasteners holding the power steering cooling line and temperature sensor bracket. Just let them hang for a minute while you remove the air dam from the left side of the condenser and then do the same to the right side air dam. Take out the screws that attach the condenser cooling fan.
When you have the cooling fan free, slip a tie wrap through one of the bracket holes and temporarily hang the unit over the intercooler pin. Disconnect the harness from the air conditioning pressure switch. Install a fender cover on the right fender. Now we are going to show you a great way to get that condenser safely out of the way. Attach a bungee cord to the right hood hinge. Take out the two remaining screws that hold the condenser in place. Carefully swing the condenser to your left and cover it with a pre-cut piece of cardboard and hang the condenser from the bungee cord. The last step is to use a couple of pieces of tape to secure the cardboard. The condenser is now safely stored for the rest of the engine removal and installation, and you did not have to discharge the air conditioning system. This is the time to drain the cooling system. Put a drain pan and bucket in place and loosen the lower coolant hose. Temporarily reinstall the condenser fan so you can remove it with the lock carrier assembly. Finger tight is all that is necessary. This tip will save a lot of time in aggravation later. Use a fine tip paint marker to carefully mark the location of each of the lock carrier bolts before loosening them. This will make it easy to align the lock carrier when you put it back together. You can get paint markers at any office supply store and you will find many uses for them on the job. Install special alignment pins number 3369 in each side of the vehicle and remove all the lock carrier retaining bolts. Use your fine tip paint marker to mark the position of the upper lock carrier bolts on each side of the vehicle. This will help in alignment during reassembly. You will still need to align the headlamps after assembly. Alignment is especially critical with xenon headlamps. At this time, note the location of the electrical connectors at the left front of the engine compartment. They are keyed, color-coded, and tie-wrapped to aid in assembly. Note that some are routed through a U-shaped clip. This would be a good time to mark them, make some notes, or take a Polaroid picture. Do whatever is necessary so you can put them back in the proper places because the routing is critical and you want to have a neat looking assembly. Get some help and take off the lock carrier assembly. Store it safely away where it won't be damaged. The viscous drive fan is the next thing to come off. It is a left-hand thread, and you will need to use a spanner to hold the pulley as you loosen the fan. The drive belt should be reinstalled so it rotates in the same direction. Take the time to mark the direction of its rotation before you release the tension and remove it. Install your left fender cover and begin to remove the coolant reservoir. Now, 
Let's use a little time-lapse photography as we remove some of the engine dress items beginning with the coolant reservoir. Next, disconnect the fuel supply and return lines and the turbocharger Y-shaped upper air duct. The electrical connections to the power stages and the air filter assembly are the next to come off. Pay attention to the location of the right side wiring harness and don't cut the special tie downs that attach it to the bulkhead. Loosen the clamps and remove the left intercooler and hoses and store them where nothing could fall into the intercooler. All hoses must be clean and grease free when they are installed or they may blow off under pressure. Off comes the right intercooler and its hoses. Disconnect the positive battery cable and feed it through the bulkhead. Clamp off and remove the power steering reservoir hose and the power steering pressure hose at the rear of the engine. Take off the windshield wipers and the left plenum cover. Take off the ECM cover. Carefully remove the left side wiring harness, the grounds, and the ECM. Pay special attention to the insulated fabric heat shield on the harness for the engine speed sensor. Make yourself a note about the routing of these wires. Three are to the vehicle right of the snap, and one is to the vehicle left of the snap. Unsnap and remove the heat shield. Carefully remove the plastic bracket from the bulkhead to gain access to what is below. Reach down behind the engine and unplug the connectors from the vehicle speed sender and the reverse gear switch. Pay special attention to the location of the insulated heat shields. Remove the exhaust temperature sensor, the heat shield attaching screws, and the upper exhaust flange nut. Now remove the engine speed sensor from the bell housing. This shot is out of sequence because the engine is already removed, but it was done to show you the importance of removing the speed sensor at this time. It would be damaged if you tried to remove the engine while it was in place. Lift the vehicle and remove the positive battery cable and part of the bracket from the right frame member. Remove the rest of the bracket and the loose bracket hold down nut from the frame. Remove the ground cable from the right frame member and replace the nut. Take off the torque support. Take out the bolts that hold the coolant tube to the engine. At this point, take off the nuts that hold the control module for the coolant fan. Move the control module out of the way and hang it with a tie wrap. This will prevent damage when you remove the engine. Now you'll have to remove the CV joint heat shields so that you can access the exhaust flange nuts. You will have to do this on both sides. Loosen the hose clamps that hold the turbocharger heat shields to the exhaust pipes. Be careful, those heat shields are very sharp. Now take off the remaining three exhaust flange nuts from each side of the vehicle. Loosen the four exhaust clamps so you can slide the exhaust system back off the turbochargers. There are ten bell housing bolts to remove. These two are Allen bolts. To remove them, you'll have to lift the engine a few inches and take them out from the front. Remove the bell housing bolts and pay attention to their location because they are of different lengths. Remove the exhaust support bolt and move the exhaust system back until it is free of the turbochargers. The motor mounts have several holes, so take the time to mark the ones used for the locating pin and the studs on your application. This will save you time and eliminate frustration during assembly. Take off the nuts from both motor mounts. Now that the engine mounts are free, install support bar 10 222A and lift the engine high enough so that you can access the two forward facing bell housing bolts. You can remove these bolts from the front using an Allen bit, universal, extension, and ratchet. Remove the oil cooler hoses, the oil filter, the nut that secures the oil cooler, and remove the oil cooler. 
Take out the three bolts holding the air conditioning compressor in place and hang it under the vehicle. We found that an S-hook from a bungee cord worked great and that the compressor was safe and out of the way until it was time to reinstall it. Attach lifting tackle 2024A and use your crane to lift the engine until it is free of the motor mounts. Make sure that all hoses, harnesses, and wires are disconnected and pull the engine free of the vehicle. You can see now why it was necessary to remove the engine speed sensor. It would have been destroyed by the flywheel as the engine was pulled forward. Secure the bell housing to transmission spacer in place with a tie wrap. If you put the tie wrap in the position shown here, you can leave it in place while you move the engine into position during assembly. Now that the engine is free, you can make whatever repairs are needed. Now, let's cover the key steps in engine installation. Before moving the engine into place, move the oil pressure wiring harness out of the way so it does not get pinched between the transmission and the engine bell housing. The right side wastegate rod has very little clearance space between it and the turbocharger heat shield when it is installed. Be sure to check its clearance after the engine is completely installed. If the wastegate rod hangs up, the system goes to emergency running mode and the diagnostic trouble code, max charge pressure exceeded, will be set. Note the proper holes into which you will insert the motor mount studs. Check the correct installation of the bell housing spacer and tie wrap. Check the position and condition of the throwout bearing. Lightly lube the transmission input shaft spline. Make sure that the turbocharger heat shields are positioned as far back as they will go. Make sure the two engine dowel pins are in position and are in good condition. Slowly move the engine into position. Make sure the turbocharger heat shields are up and out of the way. Cut and remove the tie wrap holding the bell housing to transmission spacer. Install the four bell housing bolts you can reach from the top. Lower the engine onto the motor mounts, making sure the locating pins and studs are in the right holes. Raise the vehicle on the hoist and make sure the heat shields are free and that there are no pinched wires. We will use time-lapse photography to speed up the installation of the engine accessories and dress items. Be sure all intake system hose connections are clean and grease-free. That was quick. It's time to install the lock carrier assembly. Put it in the service position and make all your connections using your notes and diagrams. Raise the vehicle to a comfortable working height. Loosely install the lock carrier retaining bolts. Move the lock carrier into position using the lines you made before disassembly and tighten it down. This will ensure the bumper, lock assembly, and fenders align properly. It does not restore headlight alignment. You will need to follow the proper procedures using the scan tool and the Hella beam setter, tool number VAS 5107 to restore the headlight alignment. Temporarily remove the fan assembly and hang it off to the side.
remove your cardboard protector from the air conditioning condenser and swing the condenser back into place in front of the radiator. Reinstall the fan assembly and the left and right air dams. Replace the bumper and align it while you are tightening it down. Connect the fog lamp wiring and replace the grills. Tighten the turbocharger heat shield hose clamps. A loose heat shield will rattle. Also, make sure there is no interference between the right wastegate control rod and the heat shield. Fill the reservoir with coolant. Open the cooling system bleed screw and bleed off any air in the cooling system. Then, top off the coolant reservoir. Test the air induction system to make sure everything is securely tightened and the turbocharger boost is going to be delivered to where it is supposed to go. Start the engine. Check oil pressure, charging, and trouble codes. Under the hood, check for leaks, rattles, and other problems. When the engine reaches operating temperature, pressure test the cooling system to make sure there are no leaks. The system must be able to hold a pressure of one bar. Raise the vehicle on the hoist with the engine running and check for coolant leaks, oil leaks, exhaust leaks, rattles, wastegate rod clearance, and general quality of your installation. Reinstall the noise insulation panel. For your final checks, hook up the scan tool and check for faults. You are not done until you have set the readiness code. Once you have set it, install the engine covers, clean up the vehicle, and set the headlight range adjustment using the scan tool and the manual alignment with the Hella beam setter. The vehicle is now ready for your road test to check the charge air pressure system using the scan tool.